Dorito, my beautiful gecko. Oh, you're so pretty, Dorito. Oh, look at his little face. Oh my God, I love him so much. And he's jumping on the camera. You're sliding. I love him. I love you, Dorito. Ooh, look at this, yeah. You getting comfy on top. He's just getting ready to jump. Yeah, you getting ready to jump? He's like trying, but he can't get like a good grip on my, oh my God, what are you doing? Show your butt to the camera. They appreciate that a lot. Crested geckos are probably one of the most popular pet reptiles out there. So I wanted to make a little video talking all about them. I actually get requests a fair bit do crested gecko videos to do care guides, whatever. So I decided that I would finally go ahead and make one. So this little guy here is Dorito and he just jumped right onto the camera. Thank you, Dorito. Let's Come back let's not jump on the camera so this is dorito and dorito is my crested gecko i have had him for about a year and a half now a little bit under that but i mean we're getting close now dorito is an awesome little guy and i love him a lot i think crested geckos can make really really cool pets for a lot of people they're really cool little guys block my face out so you can see dorito yay dorito so crested geckos can make really cool pets for a lot of people but there are definitely some things you should know before you decide to get one. If you're already familiar with crested geckos, you probably already know most of what I'm going to say. But for those of you who don't know much about crested geckos, hopefully you find this video helpful. The first thing that you should probably know if you're considering getting a crested gecko is that they jump a lot. Now, every single gecko is going to be different. They all have their own personalities. Some of them will tend to jump more than others, but for the most part, they're all going to be pretty jumpy and they will jump long distances like if I have my hand here and he's here, if he wants to jump, he will jump onto my hand. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you are new to reptiles, if you're just, like looking to get your first animal, you might want to just be aware of that. Are you okay with having something that's jumpy? Are you scared you might lose it? Some people do have a fear that they will get a crested gecko and it'll jump off of them and run away. So just keep that in mind. Make sure if you are thinking of getting a crested gecko, you are okay with them being a little jumpy. <laughs> the second thing I think you should keep in mind is that crested geckos will drop their tail. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about reptiles, that may seem kind of weird to you, but yes, they can make their tail just fall off if they wanted to, and it's actually fairly common with crested geckos. Now, Dorito here obviously does still have his tail, but it is very common for them to drop their tails, and when they drop their tails, it doesn't grow back. Crested geckos will do this if they feel scared or threatened in any sort of way. Basically dropping their tails is a defense mechanism for them. Basically say if they were in the wild and a predator was chasing after the gecko wanting to eat it, the gecko will drop its tail and then they hope that the predator will go after the tail instead of the gecko. Or if a predator happens to grab the gecko by the tail, instead of being trapped and being lunch for that predator, the gecko can drop their tail so then they can get away. So essentially dropping their tail is a defense mechanism. And obviously when we have geckos in captivity, they're not very likely to run into predators. But if your gecko does get scared, it can drop it. So when you have a crested gecko, you want to make sure you are handling them carefully. If you were to go and grab your gecko by the tail, it might drop it. If you were to chase your gecko with your hand very aggressively, it might drop it. If you were to just spook your gecko, you might it might drop it. So be cautious of that. If you don't want your gecko to drop its tail, make sure that you are just being very careful when handling it. And even if you are very careful, sometimes things just happen and they drop their tails. So just know your gecko might drop its tail. Like I said here, Dorito clearly still has his tail. He's never dropped it. Um, but my friend Taylor, for example, has two crested geckos and her crested geckos have both dropped their tails. So when they drop their tails, 
They just have a little nub. That's about all they have left, just a little nub. Third thing you should keep in mind when getting a crested gecko is not all of them are super friendly. The big majority of crested geckos do just fine with handling. I mean, I've had Dorito out this entire video and he's just fine. A lot of them are not like him. Some of them do tend to be squirmy. Some of them do not like handling that at all. Some of them just really don't like it and it can be stressful on them. And then there's even geckos who who um, can be quite defensive. For example, my friend Lori, she has a crested gecko and he is a very defensive gecko when she even just goes up to his cage to mist him down at night, he will jump at her hand and bite onto it and stuff. So keep that in mind. Crested geckos do tend to have a reputation of being fairly calm animals, and while this can be true for a lot of them, it's not true for all of them. So make sure if you are getting a crested gecko, you are prepared to deal with one that maybe isn't the tamest. The fourth thing you should know when it comes to crested geckos is that they require fairly low temperatures. And by low, I don't mean like cold, like you don't want it to be like 50 degrees or anything, and that's Fahrenheit, by the way, you don't want it to be 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But in comparison to a lot of other reptiles, you do not want them to be very warm. Crested geckos do best with temperatures in the 70s and they can even overheat if it gets too warm. So if you live somewhere that's really hot or if you live in a house that doesn't have air conditioning or whatever, you may want to reconsider getting a crested gecko. Crested geckos really don't do well if it's over 80 degrees and you do actually risk and you do actually risk having them overheat so like I said just be aware of where you live the temperatures of your house and everything like that because if you think that your house may regularly get above 80 degrees it's probably not the best environment for a crested gecko as they really do best when it's in the 70s yeah just be aware if your house does tend to be quite hot there's probably another pet that is better suited for you because obviously you don't want your pet to overheat it's probably not a good idea the last thing i want to point out is crested geckos humidity crested geckos require fairly high humidity you typically want it to be from 50% all the way up to 80% and basically what this means um, when you mist your gecko's cage down you'll take a spray bottle you know spray it down when you do that it should get up to around 80% and then as it dries out it can dry down to around 50% and then you'll spray it again and kind of like that but you really don't ever want it to go below 50% so if you live in a dry climate and you think maintaining humidity might be difficult for you then once again maybe there is a better pet suited for you. If humidity is not a problem and you know you'll be able to maintain it just fine, then good for you. But it's just always something to keep in mind. If you think maintaining humidity will be a problem, maybe consider getting another animal that doesn't require humidity as high as a crested gecko does. So that's really all of the points I wanted to say. I do want to say a few more things though before I end the video. One of them being is I do think crested geckos make amazing pets for a lot of people. This video was not to make anyone think that crested geckos are bad pets or anything because they honestly are really great pets and especially if you are like a new reptile owner or first time reptile owner, I do think they make good beginner pets. So this video was not to turn anyone off, it's just, you know, I wanted to let you know some things that you might want to think about before actually going and getting a crested gecko. <laughs> and the last thing I wanted to say was this is not a care guide. This video was just some tips and stuff that you should probably think about before getting one. Not a care. So if you are thinking of getting a crested gecko, please do not just watch this video and think you are ready to get one. There's a lot more information out there on crested geckos that I didn't share. There's a lot of things I didn't cover. So please, if you are thinking of getting a crested gecko, do some more research, watch some more videos, read some articles, join some Facebook groups, I don't know, whatever. There's lots of options out there. So please do more research if you are considering getting a crested gecko. All of that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was 
helpful to some of you. Maybe if some of you guys don't know much about crested geckos, hopefully now you know a little more. Whatever your reason was for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. Dorito hopes you enjoyed it too. And Dorito says, thank you for watching. He was excited to be on camera or like he's excited to jump on the camera over and over again. Yeah. He's excited. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe to this channel and my vlog channel, which will be linked in the description below. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to either of those. Love to have you here. Also be sure to check out my social media. Everything is just MSAM99, but it will also be in the description below. So I'd appreciate it if you check those out as well. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next video. In case you didn't know, he's named after, he's named Dorito because he kind of looks like a Dorito, like his head kind of looks like a Dorito. I know, not really, I know. Stupid name, I know. I don't know, I think his head kind of looks like a Dorito. I wasn't even the one who came up with this name. My friend did, so clearly, I'm not the only one who thinks he looks like a Dorito, so. I don't know. 